I'm gonna be completely honest with you. When I first started, it wasn't about the money. Right now, this is the truth, write this down. I wanna make as much fucking money as possible. I'm gonna tell you right now, but let me tell you why. Because I'm gonna have a family someday and I want my son or daughter to have options. The options that I never had, okay? And the other reason is, I don't wanna have to charge fucking everyone. I wanna train this guy for free because he had a stroke. I wanna train this little kid who busts his ass, who shows up at 6 a.m. Tuesday, Thursday, who drives an hour to be there. He wants to be a professional hockey player. He's 11 years old. I wanna train those people for free. So I need to make as much money as possible. But I get it. There's a reason that we give shit away because we have to build first. We do what we have to do now so we can do what we wanna do later. I didn't really care about you know, crush, crushing business at the time. I just talked to every single person, man. I wanna know who your son was, who your daughter was, what problems you have, uh, what your son's going through struggles, whatever it was. I didn't even fucking care about training at the time. I was trying to meet as many people as possible and just get people to know me by having conversations that most people didn't wanna be bothered for, with rather. So I'm at Equinox. And one day I'm walking through the main floor and I had an, uh, I treated Equinox like it was my place, okay? I would clean it up, weights organized, someone didn't put weights away, forget about it. I wouldn't say anything, I would just clean it up myself and I'm walking through the main floor one day and I stop and I turned around and I bent over and I picked up a little piece of paper and I put it in my pocket and I walked and I heard a guy say, hey! And I put my hand on my chest and said, are you talking to me? He said, yeah, I'm talking to you. Come over here. And this guy was on the Stairmaster. So I walk over to the Stairmaster and I said, what's up? He goes, what the fuck are you doing? I said, well, this floor is a mess. I said, I was picking it up with my hands, but I'm gonna try to find the vacuum to clean it up because it looks like shit. He goes, are you crazy? I said, no, I'm not crazy. I said, someone's gotta do it. And apparently the person who has this for a job isn't doing a good job, so I'm gonna do it. He said, I think someday we're going to be in business together. So this guy right here, his name is Randy Frankel. And uh, he's actually, um, he's my mentor. So find a mentor. Uh, JL and Chris. This guy really, really helped me. He owns over 150 businesses. He owns a professional sports team. And he was like, dude... I don't care what you know, I'm investing in you. Just like your business, right? People don't care what you do, they care why you do it. I'll go one step further. They're buying you. They join because of you, because of your energy. They like who you are. In my business, if I was the trainer that is an al alcoholic, drinking, a mess, slob, not organized, drug problems, always a problem, dealing with crazy relationships and a mess and cheating on his wife. Like, I wouldn't have a business. I don't know what the right thing is, but I'm always trying to do the right thing. Whatever that may be. Right for you and right for me is very different. But I'm always trying to do the right thing. So I told him I had an idea. And that idea was to create a facility that's like uh, a performance center and a global gym combined, but that's not really the main part. I said, it's gonna be the best gym in America though. He said, well, what kind of equipment are they gonna have? I said, it doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. He goes, what do you mean it doesn't matter? Of course it matters. I said, the, you've been a member here for three years. Your daughter's a member, your wife's a member, your other two daughters are members. Does the manager even say hello to you? No. Does he talk to you every day? No. Does he recognize that you're a huge part of the business? No. I said, that's why this place sucks. No one even treats you like you're special. No one's giving you support. No one's giving you that positive energy. You have to create, as we talked last night, JL, the culture. It's everything. That culture starts with you, how you carry yourself, how you behave, the way you do everything. The way you do one thing is the way you do all. It starts with you. If you have shitty culture, that's because of you. There are no bad teams, just bad leaders. 
This is me at uh, BPS. And man, I remember those days I was so tired. Friday night, 8 o'clock, man, I just slept face down on the rug. I was exhausted. <laughs> Defensive line drills. Okay, don't laugh. So, Joe knows this guy. I started to have a lot of great relationships with the athletes and the players. And it hit me hard that what we do is all about relationships. We know that. Are you nurturing those relationships? Are you paying attention to the people that look up to you? We had first rounders there. Jason Pierre Paul walked in the door. He looked like a Superman. Everyone wanted to train him. People would always say, I want to train the best athletes. This kid was in the corner and they completely ignored him. And one day he's basically in tears and he says, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing because no one helps me. And he's paying for the fucking program. So I just started to work with him and I started to get on his ass. And if he fucked up, I'd make him do it again. If it was high knees, whatever it was. And I was literally talking to him the whole time. Right there he's about, I'm thinking, he said 315, he's probably about 325. <laughs> And in this picture, he's much lighter, but he was, uh, at the time when his transformation, he went to about 285, 287. And I just started to really, really help him. And it made me feel like, hey, if a guy walks in the door and he's projected first round, he's can, he can fall forward, not to discredit them, because they work hard too, but he could fall forward. He's going to be a first rounder. This kid is from a small school that no one thinks can walk and chew gum. Imagine if he got a shot playing the NFL. So as he's doing his high knees, doing his A running, and he's doing all the speed drills, I'm talking to him like, you're fast. It's like Apollo Creed. You're fast. You got this. You can do it. You're fast. You, you're lightning. You got this. Let's go, Tommy. You got this. You're, you're fast. You're, you're grease lightning. And he's kind of laughing, but he starts to believe it. And he became the ultimate transformation at BPS. So much where he got this. And he got a shot. He didn't make the team, but he got a shot. And this, this was his dream, just to get a shot, to feel it. And he felt it. And to this day, this guy's one of my best friends. Just because I decided to walk over to kid and give him a little bit more time. Just a little bit more time. And I can't tell you how hard he's worked for Mark Magna to help my business, branding, give me opportunities that no one else gets. It was incredible. So, all of that story back up for this. We created the gym, Anatomy of 1220 in Miami Beach, Florida. This is the main floor. It's about 4,000 square feet. It's got everything. I know it's got a chandelier, I get it. I mean, it's Miami. What, that wasn't my part of the idea, but neither was this. Because these fucking columns, in between them, there's like little poles like as thick as this, and they eat space, another nightmare. But you learn a lot your first time around. So, we have 26 employees, group fitness, uh, vitamin IV, um, chiropractor, acupuncture, everything you possibly imagine, cold tub, hot, cold room, uh, steam room, sauna. We have everyone that comes in there and they come in there because they get treated like rock stars. I don't give a shit if you're Will Smith or you're the guy that waits tables at the local uh, uh, bar or restaurant. Everyone gets treated special because that's what we do. We're in the service business. I make sure that everyone has an incredible experience because that matters to me. Locker room. These are the, the four pillars. I should have went a little bit fast. I'm getting rushed. But these are four pillars of, of what we have at Anatomy and the most important things and why we have any bit of success. We went from having 16 members in our first month worrying about going out of business to 850 members now. And we do about anywhere from 55 to 65 personal training sessions a day. Culture. It starts with you. I said it before. They're not buying anatomy. They're buying me. How I do things. It's, all about, it's not kissing people's asses. It's treating people with respect. People don't want to be, you know, uh, they, they don't want to like call the shots and control you. They just want to be heard sometimes. Just paying attention to people is usually enough. How we treat each other. 
We have a lot of uh, team interactions. We have team meetings. We have front office meetings. We have continuing education development. We have presentations that everyone is responsible for doing. We have public speaking. We work on public speaking where we do table topics and they do impromptu speaking. There's a lot of in-house education that happens. But the most important thing is it's a team culture. If you're not a team player, it's definitely not the place for you. This is on the door uh, to the staff room. Just very basic. When you come here, be honest, do your best, work with passion, treat everyone with respect. It's an absolute must. Hiring. Are they consistent in their habits? So I don't hire them. I, I, my first year, I hired everyone. Everyone in that building, I hired. Now, the trainers on our staff, they hire them. I said, you're going to have to deal with them. You hire them. So they sit down and they decide. They'll ask crazy questions. And they know, as JL said, remember we talked last night? They know what answers they're looking for. I tell you that right now. Because if they're not like-minded, they don't have a shot. I trust them to do the right thing. I trust them to do the right thing when I'm not around. That's the most important thing because I have a shit ton of responsibility. Anatomy number two is being built and we just uh, signed a lease for anatomy number three. I can't be there all the time. But if I can trust you to do the right thing when I'm not around, we're good. You're on a team. Are they in it for the right reasons? Look, I know Rachel talked about it's not about the money, fuck money. I'm going to be completely honest with you. When I first started, it wasn't about the money. Right now, this is the truth. Write this down. I want to make as much fucking money as possible. I'm going to tell you right now. But let me tell you why. Because I'm going to have a family someday, and I want my son or daughter to have options. The options that I never had. Okay? And the other reason is, I don't want to have to charge fucking everyone. I want to train this guy for free because he had a stroke. I want to train this little kid who busts his ass, who shows up at 6 a.m. Tuesday, Thursday, who drives an hour to be there. He wants to be a professional hockey player. He's 11 years old. I want to train those people for free. So I need to make as much money as possible. But I get it. There's a reason that we give shit away because we have to build first. We do what we have to do now so we can do what we want to do later. Team. Solutions. I don't deal with problems. I don't deal with complaints. If you have a problem, come with a solution. That's an in-house policy. Everyone knows that who works for me, with me. Are they always up to help others? If they just care about themselves, there's a big problem. There's a big problem. With training, team, we do one-on-ones with each other. We self-assess. We do uh, 360 meetings where you sit down in the middle of the room and it's a big circle and we air out our gripes. There's a big sign on the door that says, check your ego and emotions at the door and we let you have it. This is what I don't like. I don't like how you handle this. I don't like the way you talk to me. And we have it out. There's a lot of emotions in that room. There's crying, there's yelling, but at the end of the day, we're stronger for it. Um, my first gig was I sat down with every single person in the building and I found out what made them tick. And that took a lot of time, man, but it's a coffee or a lunch and I just get to know them inside out. I want to know what's important to them because I might not agree with them, but if they value it, I have to see some sort of value in it. Service. Uh, a few things. I know I'm, I get a rush. I'm going to rush, please. So. Gentleman comes in the gym, he wants to train. Shit, Mark, I can't train, I forgot my stuff at home. We send the, we'll send a trainer or a staff member to that guy's house to get his suit from his closet. We do it often. Uh, checking on homes during the hurricane. During the hurricane, we got every, all, everyone's information that lived in the bad area, and we checked on their homes. We just drove randomly to their homes and see if there was a tree through the roof or if they needed some sort of help or assistance. Uh, One-on-ones with members. I want the feedback. And it, most members won't tell you to your face. They're not going to say, hey, Mark, this sucks. You're going to say, that's great. I really appreciate that. Thank you. But say, give me something we really need to work on. Give me one takeaway we really need to work on. Who's the most important person in trainer-client relationship? I always say, the most important person in relationship, your, your family, your, light, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, client. It's not you. It's the other person. They're the most important person. Forget about yourself for five minutes. Having empathy, the ability to understand the feelings of others. Be understanding. If a client shows up hungover, I always hear this. I'm going to fucking hammer him. Man, I'm going to make sure he never does that shit again. What would you do if a client showed up hungover? Be honest. You'd be pissed, right? You'd be pissed. What if you found out his dad died last night? Changes things, right? You don't know the backside of it. I mean, if a guy shows up drunk all the time, that's different. But what I'm saying is... 
You don't know the other side of it. Don't assume like you do know. Give him the benefit of the doubt. Find out. This is uh, upstairs group fitness. We had Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon yoga uh, when, the, when the sun went down. It was interesting. <sighs> I said it before. I swear, Alicia, I'm going to close this, please. No, you're good. All right. So <laughs> leaders never cross the finish line first. People cross the finish line first are running alone. Leaders never cross the finish line first because when they come across, they're bringing people with them. That's uh, John Maxwell. And this is interesting because... I always, early on in my life, it was like macho, football, be a warrior, beast mode. I'm going to fuck shit up. And I didn't even start to understand that someone else is standing in front of me till later on in my life. And I have to pay attention to other people. But this is what I started to under, pay attention to. And there was a reason I understand, because I was immature. Because I was immature. Immature people don't think about other, putting others first. They're immature because they think of themselves first. That's what makes them immature. So having the ability to self-assess and take a real deep look at who you are and how you act is important. Most people can't do it. They're like, no, man, I'm good. I don't have any flaws. This is our team. These are just uh, the floor trainers. We have uh, 12 other uh, trainers that are group fitness and outside. That was just me. Uh, a maintenance worker saw me doing that and shot it to the gym. He said, why is Mark cleaning the floor? I said, because he didn't do it last night. The guy said he did it last night. So I checked the video. He said, I didn't see you do it. But I realized that when a few trainers saw me doing that when they walked in, then they started doing it. Because I realized that, you know, I get mad at these people. I say, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Why doesn't he do this? My mentor says, why didn't you tell him? Don't assume they know everything. You didn't know everything. I, needed, I had a lot of people helping me. I had a lot of people contributing to the growth of Mark Megna. I can't assume people know things. If I tell them and explain to them why, and then they don't do it, then we have a problem. But people started to pay, people are paying attention to everything you do. It starts with you. Remember what I said? They buy you. This is just a kid. These are all videos, but these are just young kids from Texas that flew in. Their parents flew them in. This is what I want to do more of. That's why I want to make money so I don't have to worry about it because I knew they couldn't afford it. They saved up their allowance to... Uh, to train. This is Cedric. He said his dream was to, his dream, his fucking dream was to do a sled, a sled march in his wheelchair. I want to do more of this. It made him feel strong. It made him feel good. He said he felt alive, right? Just like a, a Dick Hoyt in the sun. He said he felt alive because he could do what everyone else was doing. All right. That's, <laughs> that's my dog. I just wanted to, <laughs> I want to lighten it up, but this guy was found like half dead under like an expressway in Miami tied up to a fence and we adopted him and he's been like the coolest thing in the world. But I want to spend more time with my family as well, Joe, right? We, the days are numbered, right? We only get so much time. It's never enough. And my advice to, you know, what Joe said really resonated with me because he said, no matter what you do, it's never a perfect balance. Michael Jordan will tell you, I didn't fucking balance. I was obsessed with basketball. That was great. There's no balance. I try to have balance. Of course I do. But my wife yells at me too. My best advice for that is find a partner. Choose wisely. <laughs> Seriously. And treat kindly. Because if they kind of get it, that's a huge win. It's my wife. So, oh, by the way, a perk of having your, a business partner that owns a baseball team, you get to get married on the field. So, of course. Trust me, it's not my car. I didn't even know how to drive it. So <laughs> let me just say this, okay? I took, uh, this is my clothes here. All right. Think long and hard about how you want to spend the next 40 years of your life. Map that shit out. Write it down. Think about what the most important things are to you, okay? Don't settle for a job or a profession or a career. Seek a calling. The fatigue will be easier to bear. The disappointments will be fuel. The highs will be like nothing you ever felt. I'm going to ask you to participate in this last exercise for me, okay? This industry is all about people. The relationships you have with young people, with everyday people, 
You're the coach. The lessons you pass on and the bond you form with these people will help, you make, will help make your business work. Remember, when people say, it's all good, Mark, it's just business. Fuck that. It's never just business. If it's just business, business isn't very good and you're going to have a big problem. Okay, I'm going to read this list and if any one of these statements applies to you, please participate. Stand up. If you use training as a means to build confidence as a kid, stand up. Come on, guys. If you sought out a coach because you needed a positive role model in your life, stand up. We might have to stop when it was up. Hold on. <laughs> if, you, if training transformed your body, stand up. If training earned you respect from others, stand up. If you turn to training as therapy at any point in your life, stand up. Is anyone sitting? Can I stop this? There's someone sitting in the back. Hold on. You might get them. If you realize training saved your life at any point, stand up. If training helped you be a better person, stand up. If you had a coach that you looked up to because he helped train you, stand up. If your gym community became your family and you could depend on all of them, stand up. So look who's standing up right now. You're the future. You're the future of this industry. And the shit that you do matters. Think about that. Think about the impression you want to leave on other people. Think long and hard about it because everyone is watching you. Raise the bar. Make this industry better because the coaches in here right now are the people that are going to do it. Thank you, guys.